Hey, good day to you. This is Todd. I'm just a regular dude walking in the word. For these, uh, well, yesterday we talked about getting ready for Pentecost. And you know what today is? Today is Pentecost Sunday. So I thought, let's take a break from Mark and spend some time talking about Pentecost Sunday. A lot of times we just look at it in the calendar and we think, oh, Pentecost Sunday. I just, I know there's Pentecostal uh, people in the church and charismatics and stuff, but is this their holiday? No. We talked about yesterday how it was 50 days after Passover, and it was a holiday that was set up. It's also called the Feast of Weeks. It was a holiday that was set up back um, in the Old Testament, and these the believers were just there meeting on that day. They, they it wasn't, um, and the Lord had, the Lord Jesus had said. Go and you know meet together and, and wait for my presence for the Holy Spirit to come. So I'm going to be reading. We're going to read um, Acts two. You could spend weeks on just Acts two, but I'm going to read Acts two verses one through thirteen only. I'd encourage you to read the rest of the chapter uh, later on today. Uh, when and it says this: When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Uh, We talked about that yesterday, how they had all gathered in one place. They were there, um, just gathering on that day. Verse 2, Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where, where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Okay. They weren't making this up on their own. It was the Holy Spirit that had done this. as, the, And the Holy Spirit was enabling them to do this, to speak in other tongues. If you read later in the chapter, you're going to see that some of these tongues were recognized, you know, from the different people that were in Jerusalem at that time. Um, but uh, let's keep reading. Verse 5. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly they amazed. They asked, aren't these who are speaking Galileans? Okay, that, that's kind of a slam. Like, Galileans aren't educated people. And they're like, but these guys are speaking all these languages, which you'd have to be educated to speak all those languages. And they're going, aren't these guys Galileans? Um, I don't even have a way to... to you know, compare that today. So it was a slam. I, you know, aren't these uh, guys Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Ju- Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phagra, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene, and visitors from Rome both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God's own tongue. Wow, that's a lot of different people that are there, and they're all hearing different tongues. It wasn't just one language. They weren't all speaking French. It was all kinds of different languages there, okay? Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They've had too much wine. Okay? Jesus, uh, Peter is going to get up and, and then give a speech, and he's going to talk about. It. He's going to say, "Too much wine." What are you guys talking about? It's like a warning, um, and it's like wasn't heard of to be drunk at that time. Just like today, you, I mean, you find people that are drunk in the morning, and and that's like, um, you're like, that guy's drunk already in the morning. Um, but you know, being drunk at night, that is more accepted. Um, but Peter says, no, they're not drunk. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. And then he goes back and quotes prophecies from the Old Testament, uh, from Joel um, is one of them. But he, he quotes and says how the Holy Spirit was sent and, and, um, and this, and how great this is. What I want you to see today is the Holy Spirit was sent. It was sent then, and it's sent into our lives now. Um, some people... Um, famous people today and and theologian say well the Holy Spirit came back here in Acts 2 and that was it Um, then that's all the Holy Spirit needed to do is get that church started and then it was on its own 
Um, I would beg to differ. The Holy Spirit is given to us today. The Holy Spirit is active in everything I do. Um, and, you know, I pray the Holy Spirit would guide me each day. Um, that's one big prayer I have each morning is, Holy Spirit, fill me up and guide me each day that I may be Spirit-led, okay? And so I would encourage you guys to do the same thing. This Holy Spirit wasn't given just in Acts 2 and then gone. The Holy Spirit is available for you today. So ask for the Holy Spirit to to in, to fill you. You know, you want to be filled up with the Holy Spirit, not, not half full, but you want to be filled with the Spirit and then ask the Spirit to guide you each day and submit to that Spirit, you know. When the Holy Spirit leads me in a certain uh, thing to do, I need to follow that leading of the Holy Spirit, not just go off on my own. So that's my uh, uh, conclusion for today. Remember the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is given today, just like it was in Acts 2. Um, and, you know, uh, for us, and the, it was really given for the power to witness to others, okay? Um, it wasn't, you know, just a, a fun thing to have, a thing to collect, but it, the Holy Spirit is given, the reason it's given is to empower you to witness. All right, so we will can. Uh, we're concluding Pentecost for today and tomorrow we're going to pick it back up uh, in Mark we're going to continue on through Mark so thanks for watching and we will chat with you tomorrow Lord's blessing see ya